knowledge. Hey everybody, this is Guru Amin, and I have a special guest on my show today. It's Dorian Yates, and this is going to be some raw video that we took. Um, I've been friends with Dorian for since last year, and um, before his injury in his shoulder, and we finally got a chance to do a video together. And I think you guys are going to like it. Part one of Inside the Mind of the Shadow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so boy. cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's cute. Man. Is it a boy? Yeah. Wow. How yeah, his name is Jack. Jack. He looks a little bit like my old dog, man, uh, Moby, that passed away. So maybe he's reincarnated or something. Anyway. How old is Jack right now? Uh, he's weeks? like nine weeks. Nine Very weeks. Young. Yeah. That's so cool, man. With him, like going outside too much and everything. What are you feeding um, him? Um, well, I just got some dog food, but I'm going to wean him off that and uh, start giving him some chicken and eggs and stuff and, uh, you know, more, more human Can you food. hold him up? He's so small. I want to see his whole his body like this, if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> How much does Jack weigh? Jack. Jack. 15 pounds, maybe? Sorry? 15 pounds, you think? Nah, not that much, what? man. No, how, how, like less than that? Seven or eight pounds, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, they grow to be about 25, 30 pounds normally. Right. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good, man. It's getting me outside more. That's it's great. Little, so I can't walk him far, but I'm looking forward to when I can go. Because, you know, if you've got a dog, you got a reason to go walking, right? Right. And first thing in the morning, too, because they got to go in the morning. So you first can thing in the morning, cardio take him out in the evening, and there's a big grass area here with a lot of people walk their dogs and all that stuff. So it's, uh, you know, Moby used to come to yoga with me. He used to come and he used to fucking love yoga. If you see awesome. me get my yoga mat out, he'd start jumping around, barking, going crazy. That's so cool. And then he'd come That's and so he'd just cool. get, it, it must feel the energy or something because they'd just chill out. That's awesome, man. I have yeah. I haven't had a dog. I, I want to get one for my son, but we I just got to get a little bit more situated first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, these these will be good because they're uh, you know they're little. They don't. I, we got a, an apartment, so I can't have a big dog here. And there's a lady a couple of doors away. She's got dogs, so you know. Uh, you see, it only gets to twenty five pounds, right, Jack? Yeah. So I take him everywhere with me. Take him to a restaurant. They sit on. Can the you table. put it in the bag? I've seen I some could people do, put dogs in a bag. I don't know. I like to let them walk, man. That's some fucking girl thing. That's the cool. Dog in a bag, you know? <laughs> <laughs> At a restaurant, you could just sit on your lap and it's okay? Yeah, or you could sit under the table. They're pretty cool here about dogs, so... That's awesome. In England, it's more difficult. You know, so every yeah. country is different. But here, they're, here they're cool, man. In, I did, a, States, I did a show with Lebroni the other day. Was it yesterday? Or yeah, it's already out. Yeah, they, they, sorry. They put it out right away. It was out yesterday. Yeah, um, I didn't do it yesterday. No, I did the day before. Yeah. It's on Wednesday today. I did it Monday, yeah. They put it up overnight. They did a good job yeah. editing. Yeah. Yeah. They did How's it like talking too. to Kevin? When was the last time you spoke to him? Uh, probably when we did an appearance together. I think it was Poland. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the owner of his company knows my uh, business partner. So... I think they fell out or something, but anyway, I don't let it, you know, Kevin's Kevin and I'm me and I, you know, whatever the, I'm between them, I don't really know between the two business guys, you know? Uh, but he, let me ask cool, you something. Man. I like Kevin. Um, back, back in the day, you, you trained with Kevin, right? You did, you guys are we, did. Are, a, we, are, we, are we recording now? Yeah, I, I have it on record. I can edit it if you want. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Right. I trained um, with I just uh, wanted to make sure I get it. What's that? I trained with Kevin once. You can, you trained with Kevin once. Uh, where was it? In, in uh, it wasn't in the United States, right? It was somewhere no, it was else. In, uh, it was at FIBO because um, FIBO. FIBO was this. I mean, it still is uh, when it's on. Anyway, it was a huge expo they have in Germany, mm -hmm. and uh, at that time, everyone was signed to the Weeder company. So literally, everybody was signed with Weeder, right? He signed up everybody, all the top male pros, all the the females. They all were signed on a weeder contract. 
Mm-hmm. And part of the Oida contract was that you do a certain amount of appearances. Right. And uh, FIBO was four days. So they used to fly everyone over to FIBO and they had the big Oida stand. Twice a day, everyone would come out and pose. Like I think it was like 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock or something. Mm-hmm. And the crowd was just packed, man. It was, it was crazy. So, uh, and it's a long day, you know, you're, you're there. And at that point, people didn't really, they, you know, didn't have cameras on the phones or anything. So they, they pay to take a picture with you or they t- pay mm-hmm. to um, get a signed autograph. So we're there all day and most of the guys would choose not to train because, you know, it's a long day and they have some time off, right? Mm-hmm. But I never did take time off and Kevin didn't want to take time off. So we went to the gym like 7 o'clock in the morning, spoke mm-hmm. to a local gym owner who normally wouldn't be open, but they opened up for us 7 in the morning and uh, got some ACDC blasting on the speakers. And we, we trained back together. That's what I heard. Yeah, I, I showed him how to do. I showed him how to do rows properly, and then do I saw you, the next. And the next year, his back was a lot better. So I thought, I'm not going to be so nice next time and show people stuff. It's going right. To and yeah. I wanted to ask you, what workout did you do with him? Like, did you do the reverse grip bent over rows? Yeah, we did reverse grip rows, and uh, I went up to like four or five, something, maybe a bit more than that. Mm-hmm. Kevin wasn't quite up there, but he was doing probably 350 or something. And I showed him was, how to do it. Was Kevin form- was really strong on the pressing stuff. Like his right. delt. Yeah, his he triceps. had huge chest, shoulders, and triceps. So he he was not so strong on the back, and his technique was not perfect. Right. So I showed him how to do this, which was like, oh, okay, I'm not doing that again next time. What What was he doing wrong? Because, I mean, I remember him in 92. Just, uh, like some of the form was not that tight. It was not, you know, controlling the weight, not squeezing, and not really uh, understanding how to um, engage the lats more. Uh, so it was, it was just a technique thing. I mean, the guy had trained hard and everything. So it was yeah. more like the technique I was showing him, how to control the weight and how to, you know, position it and how to, where to squeeze it and everything. I think most people that do bent over rows these days, I see them doing it. They stand too upright. They need to be bent over more. Well, it was me that started the upright thing, but then people took it a bit too. They took it too far, yeah. Too much, yeah. So I had a Yeah, like, the difference... Instead of being parallel like that, I came up like this, which right. put Lats in a better position. To pull and it's funny to you the... say that, because I watched Lee Haney's videos, and he was more like that, and then you're the yeah, next Yeah, that's the old school way. Yeah, yeah Lee, Lee Haney was doing it the old school way, and yeah. you know, of course, he had a great back. But um, So was that something you yeah. kind of invented, like for at least as far as you knew, was that technique? Because your I lats think, were crazy strided. You know what, man? I, I read every bodybuilding magazine, every book, and... Then I'd read stuff and then I'd think about it and I'd try it and see if it made sense, see if it worked. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a guy called Rory Lidlmeyer, mm-hmm. who's, a, you know, he still looks great. He's in his 60s now, he still looks a great bodybuilder physique. Um, out in California, he was Mr. California and he nearly won the nationals, but I think Bob Paris beat him or something one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, I, I believe that uh, I kind of got the idea for one, one of his articles to stand up more upright and bring it into the waist and engage the lower lats a little bit more. And uh, I was inspired by Ben Aziza when he beat me in uh, my first pro show in 1990 because his back was so three-dimensional thick and so was Haynes, another guy that, that beat me. That was the Night of the Champions? Night of the Champions, 1990. And then Haney, I competed in 91. And he had great thickness to his back um, you you won the night of champions in 91 though right 91 yeah i won and then you went on to do the olympia and came in second correct exactly yeah the same year yeah. yeah i probably was in better shape at night of champions i would say now looking back uh, i was a little tighter there so it was a funny timing because night of champions was may and the olympia i think was september at that point so you got like three, three and a half months between the shows. Mm-hmm. It was a little um, difficult to manage the timing, but I was in great shape, but probably a little better at Night of Champions. So it, when you, let's go back to, to 1990 really quick. When Ben Aziza um, won the, the competition, what did you think? Because he was a shorter guy. I mean, I, I never saw him uh, in real person, but um, I would imagine he had a lot of muscle on his short frame. Did you yeah, think that he, he was? Uh, did you think he was very, very thickly developed? 
um, and no really uh, no weak points. He's just a shorter guy. I mean, if that's a weakness, I don't know. But um, he had muscle everywhere, man. He was he was very uh, densely muscled. Even his abs were thick and everything. So uh, yeah, he was impressive, man. And he obviously. As soon as competition got going, I kind of figured out it was between me and him. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and possibly I could have beaten him if I'd have come in like I was probably three weeks before because it was a lot fuller. Mm -hmm. I kind of over-dieted and then going to New York was a whole new experience for me and quite stressful. I didn't have... Uh, I, I, it's a funny story. I landed there because I'd never been to the States before, and let alone New York, I mean, which is a huge... City, I only seen it on TV, right? So it's just kind of fantasy land. And uh, I don't know where I'm going to stay or where I'm going to train and everything. So I asked the, um, one of the reps in England that judged at the Mr. Olympia sometimes. He knew Wayne Demila. And he said, I'll ask Wayne. And he said, uh, I've spoken to Wayne and Wayne sort something out. And you've got somewhere to stay and there's a gym there. And you know, it'll be cool. Yeah. You got it. So Wayne actually picked me up at the airport. Uh, and at first he said, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that it was you because I was expecting a black guy. Because all, <laughs> all the bodybuilders from England at that point were black. I mean, Albert, Albert Beckles, uh, Bertle Fox, mm -hmm. Johnny Fuller, all the pros were, you know, the black dudes from the, from the islands. Mm -hmm. And he said you had a funny name as well. So I just figured, you know, I'm a, so I met Wayne and uh, he drove me into New York in the Lower East Side and uh, it didn't look pretty, man, but maybe, <laughs> I didn't say anything, but maybe he felt I was a bit apprehensive and he's like, oh, hey, I know this looks like a shithole here, but it's not now. It's like a trendy place and everything, It's just, you know, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, there was a guy waiting for me and he was the guy that I was going to stay with. Mm. And... Um, you know, no disrespect or anything, but he was blatantly gay. And he must have, you know, so they obviously had just asked at the gym, hey, there's a guy coming from England, bodybuilder, does anyone want to put him up? And he must have been, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, <laughs> there I was, two or three in the morning. And, uh, you know, this is where I'm going to stay. And I got all my bags and everything. I got this little cooker. I got everything because I wanted to be prepared. And uh, I was with my, my ex-wife, Debbie, at the time. And she was freaking out, like, I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here. And we had this little room. And then I could see another guy naked on the bed next door. And I was like, man. So I said, okay, okay. I said to the guy, I said, look, uh, you know, thanks for offering and everything, but it's not going to be suitable here. I can't stay here, man. So I need you to find me a hotel, preferably one with cooking facilities, please. He's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do that maybe in the morning. I'm like, no, man. I'm like, maybe you're not understanding me. Like, I need to need leave now, right? I need to have a place. I need to get ready for my show and everything. This is no good. You know, I didn't say anything right. about right. why, but I just, it's not suitable. There's not enough space and what have you. So he found me the Chelsea Hotel, um, mm -hmm. which was like apartments, quite a famous place. A lot of artists live there. And uh, actually Sid Vicious from the Sex Pistols, who's, you know, one of the guys that used to listen to the music and everything. And uh, he murdered his girlfriend in there. So it was, it was a place I already heard of. And I was like, that's some weird synchronicity that I go stay in the Chelsea Hotel and that's where Sid Vicious, you know, murdered his girlfriend and you know, overdosed later on and, and died as well. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a strange uh, introduction to New York. Was it nice? Was the hotel nice? I mean, it was cool. It was. It's like an old hotel. There's a lot of a lot of artists, arty people living there. It's real old, um, but people live there. You know, there's a, there's like an apartment hotel. So you got a kitchen. I was happy, man. I got a kitchen. That was the main thing that I could stay on my diet properly. I didn't have to eat in a restaurant or anything. I was very how many anal about that? Like I used to weigh my food. All the, even in the season, I used to weigh my food. Of course, calculate everything. So. Um, most guys didn't do that in the off season. They, you know, they'd eat out at the restaurants and stuff and just kind of guess. Um, but I was very precise and it really threw me off. I was like, man, I did all this preparation for the show. And now I'm like in the middle of nowhere in this apartment. And I don't know where I am. I don't know where I'm going to go to the gym. 
So, um, yeah, that was my introduction to New York. But in the end, it worked out. Uh, it worked out well. I got How many my days were you, before the show. Were you there? I think about uh, eight or nine days, something like so that. So you had so to I get my low gym. carb yeah. stuff and everything there, and yeah. the traveling was stressful and these things. Well, I wasn't used to, so I dropped more weight than I probably wanted to do. I mean, I was mm -hmm. shredded, but I was pretty flat as well. Um, so, you know, it was a learning experience and I got second there and the invite out to, to California to shoot for Flex magazine and got my first Flex cover. So that's every bodybuilder's dream at that point. There was no internet. You, you want to get known, you want to make it, you got to get in Joe Weider's magazines. Mm -hmm. we, that was when your hair was still long, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was pretty, it was a bit short the first time and then I grew it for the second one, which everyone called the mullet. You know, it's the, the famous mullet haircut, but it was kind of uh, trendy at the time, I guess. It was. Yeah, the, the hair was long. If, if you had to give advice to a bodybuilder as far as traveling on an airplane goes, what would you tell them, like, how many days out before the show do you think is right? Well, definitely, ideally, give yourself a week, yeah? Because mm -hmm. it throws you off. You, you retain water, and it takes a couple of days to, you know... And the time difference as well and all these things it takes a couple of days for your body to balance out, probably three or four days. Yeah. You don't want to be doing that like right near to the contest and it's going to throw you off. You're going to hold water. You're going to start breaking out. And so and, and it, it's good to go and train, right? Right. It's good Absolutely. to train. It's good to pump the blood run and, and sweat and yeah. also get up in the morning on, on the time zone and start setting your body clock and everything. So... If I was going overseas with the time zone change, I would advise at least a week if you can. Maybe even 10 days would be better. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, Hadi Chupin, you know Hadi Chupin, yeah. the Iranian bodybuilder, he, uh, he j just barely made it to the, to the United States for the Olympia. And you could just imagine what he would have looked wow. like if he, I mean, because he came in second at the night show, clear. Every judge said he was second at the night show. Yeah. And that still was only like two days. What if he would have had yeah. another week? I mean, I think that guy's going to be some danger. He's going to be dangerous. People yeah, that's going to be stressful, man. It's difficult to be at your best under those circumstances. Yeah. I mean, it could go either way. Like the stress could make you lose a bit more weight. And if that's what you needed, it could actually turn out to be beneficial. But if you're already in shape, and you lose too much weight or you start holding water because of the flight and then the, the flight, yeah. and it's not, it's definitely not ideal. Uh, I don't know why it came so late and maybe some issue with a visa or something. It I was, think. yeah, it was, yeah. he got it the very last minute. It was crazy. So but, that's not good for mentally. Like you don't know, like if no. you're getting ready for this show and now you don't know if you're going to be there. That's got to be tough. I, I heard this uh, Hani Rambaugh talking about it in the video where he was saying how they were basically, you know, there three days, it didn't happen each day. And then finally they did it, you know, overnight and he got it the next day and flew over and then showed up at the show. So that's well, amazing. It's going to be better next time. Right. So, I mean, I hope so. It depends on the relationship with Iran, but who knows, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I hope for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you what you're, what's going on over there as far as the uh, COVID and the masks and everything. Are people wearing them in Spain? Uh, yeah. I mean, I actually think it's supposedly compulsory to wear it on the streets. I wow. don't because I just think it's, it's bullshit. It, even if there was a pandemic of the proportions that the media is trying to scare us with, which I don't which I know it is not, no, it's not think, I know it is not, um, then a piece of mask is not going to really do anything. And the experts that don't work for the media and don't get paid by some corporation or by the media all agree on that, that the masks are useless. So I just see it as a form of um, forced kind of submission and compliance. So I'm not very good at complying <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good at thinking for myself. So um, some shops will insist. Um, I actually got an exemption from my doctor, so I can pull that out if I want to. But mostly I just go to places that I know people. Like I know the, the gym, the gym don't require masks. And That's interesting, they do over here. Yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous. 
it, you can't like which, on, which, like which health expert can tell you that it's good to exercise with a, a cloth mask that's that's inhibiting your breathing uh, it, it's stopping you from expelling toxins and now you're breathing back your own toxins um wow. who who can say that this is actually good for your health hand on the heart i mean nobody can say that it's I not mean, good for your health I, it's got to be bad I, for you I tried squatting the other day and I was literally dizzy in between sets because I, I just, you know, it well, was how just about difficult. If you just had a, like a pair of women's lacy panties on your face for all the holes in and that. Would that work? I mean, what's the, what's the requirement for a mask that's actually, you know, the, there's all different kinds of masks and, and some are like very thin, some are much thicker. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just a nonsense, man. If I, if I had to wear a mask to go in the gym, I wouldn't go. I would just train at home or, or something like that because it's, I, you know, I'm doing cardio with a mask on. I mean, that's I'm getting crazy. so discouraged too. I, 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 re, I wish I had a gym at home. I don't because I wasn't planning on this, but you know, I still go, but I try to just go three days a week and do cardio outside. And I try yeah. to just get in all the body parts three days a week, you know? Well, I mean, you, you could have a mask that's like, I don't know, like super thin made of silk or something. So it just, you know, tick in the box, but you can still breathe. Uh, we, probably, but still it's still it's catching you know it's building up bacteria as it's, you're breathing out all the time you're in the gym for an hour or something you're breathing heavy it's it's not good for anyone's health i um i never told you i don't know if i told you about the inventions that i made did i tell you about those no i never did i see th this is something I, I told benji about but i didn't i we never talked about it because it was just something i didn't really think it was appropriate to bring up but I have uh, three global patents on a yeah. biomass decortication process that I invented that uses uh, hydrogen peroxide and an iron-based catalyst, and it creates oxygen, and basically it inoculates all the... We, we use it for cannabis, yeah. so all the waste of cannabis and, and hemp. So if they grow hemp for CBD, then the stock is not... They say it's not able to get fiber from because okay. the fiber stalks are long and, and thin and they can just peel it with a decorticator, right? And funny that I, I met Benji through you, but he was telling me how that decortication's outdated. And then I told him about the inventions that I made in the company. One of the products that we have, we can make anything clothing, by the way. So if you want bed sheets made of hemp or marijuana, it can be done. It's very soft. They, they can mix it with cotton or they can mix it well, with silk. That's what, they, that's what they used to use it for. I used to make rope and clothing. and uh... Absolutely. Uh, everything come in the, until they outlawed it. I don't know, it's the early 1900s, right? And uh, I think this machine was it called a decodicator? Decodicator, yes. Wasn't that outlawed or something? And you couldn't use it. Uh, I saw something on Joe Rogan's show about that. I, you know, I don't know the history of the decodicator being outlawed. I, from my understanding, it was invented by an African American male, and I think that they just stole the patents. Okay, but um. But needless to say, the decorticator, the fault of the decorticator was, was you're feeding the machine. Okay. So that what the, the invention that I made, just imagine you can fill up stocks in a swimming pool. Wow. You could do tons at a time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. now uh, my brother's the CEO of the company. The company is called nine, the number nine, the word fiber, F-I-B-E-R. Right. I, I came up with the name because basically we, uh, we inoculate the Delta nine and it's just, it becomes industrial uh, hemp yeah. so all the waste of the marijuana uh dispensaries in the whole country if we can because they have to chip it up and throw it in the, in the waste they don't have to anymore we can make viable goods out of it we've okay. already made so, great it, yeah, why, why waste it if you can use it why something? waste it yeah so there at some point we'll be talking about that with you benji and i and this is what i wanted to bring up the other day but while i got you on the phone i just wanted to, i'll edit this out i just wanted to bring okay. this up um but yeah, so over here, um, back to the COVID thing, the, the mask that we made that I, I wear because it's, it's a mask that we made is silver and hemp. And okay. it, it does really help with the, with the, the antibacterial, antimicrobial when you breathe out. Wash but at silver, the same yeah. time, we, we, I wash mine every day. It's hand washable, machine washable. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, like I said, it's, it's, it's nice for what it is, but I'm like you, I don't want to wear it. Even though I, I, well, I don't do know somebody somebody sent me something today, a friend from the US on the WhatsApp, and it seems like a lot more uh, states are now dropping the mask mandate. Um, Texas did, yeah, I got, yeah, um, which is good news. 
you're you're pretty up to date with American politics. Yeah, because I have friends in the states. So, and and it's funny because I got friends <laughs> on on what do you want to call it on the left, on the right, and uh, right. it seems very extreme. Um, the division in the states. I mean that maybe that's part of the plan to divide people because if they're divided, then you have less strength, right? So divide and conquer is an old tactic. When, when you say the plan, who is they? Who is they that's making the plan? Because we've talked about this before and I know what you mean and I, I agree with you. Yeah, well, forces that control um, many industries. And if you follow up all the companies and you follow up all the, you know, all the tentacles, they go to very few um, very few families and very few um, corporations. And uh, that's why they're able to control um, something on a global scale. So what we were talking about before is that there's a... There's Banking, a family, media, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's all the same group or groups uh, yes. of, uh, of people that uh, have their influence over that. For instance, if you look at the British government, which I maybe I know a little bit more about because I'm from there and the individuals in there, then they've all been receiving massive amounts of grants, especially the medical um, uh, ministers, 20, 30 million uh, in grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So, you know... <laughs> How can you be independent if you're taking money from somebody like that that has an agenda? You can't be. So, you know, that, that's that's how it works. And so, big organizations like United Nations, they, they, you know, putting out the decrees. But there are a lot of people fighting back now. And I don't mean fighting back like, of course, it's instinctively it's tempting to go on the streets and want to physically fight. But that won't get anybody anywhere. That will just play into the hands um, and and give them the system more excuses to um, bring in more harsh and draconian measures onto people. Um, people are finding it legally now, and they you know they're having some results, and then it's being overturned and whatever. But it's happening in in Holland. They over <clears throat> they declared the curfew was was illegal. I think it got overturned now. Um, things like that, that's the way it's it's got to be done, I think. So it is happening. Speaking people are waking up and saying, hey, like, even people I know that were first really kind of worried that there was a pandemic and all this stuff, they're like, no, it doesn't start to twig on them now. It's not really making sense. What, speaking and, of... But let's, let's be clear. I'm not saying there's no respiratory disease out there. Right. Or maybe there's a new one that's unique. Um, but as, as I understand well, it, it's never been isolated. So if it's yeah. not been isolated, how can you prove its existence? Let's and talk how about that. Test for it. You sent me a video, and I, I found it very interesting and compelling to send it to other people. Okay. And if you want, I can put a link to that video or, or maybe. Yeah, do that, man. Because the, the thing is, I mean, who am I? I'm just a fucking bodybuilder right and, 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 a, and a person with a, an opinion um but these are real um experts and specialists and scientists and there's fucking thousands of them thousands and thousands of them that uh are pointing out um the holes in in this story and this agenda but they don't get their time or you know if they get want to post something on social media they just get censored like I, i'm you know not saying I'm pro or anti or anything, but Trump was the president of the U.S. and even he got even he got censored on, on social media. So now it's like, uh, where, where are we living now in 12 months' time since this thing started? It sounds a lot like or even worse than Soviet Russia or, and, and China where people can't speak out and can't have an opinion. And if you can control the flow of information that goes to people, you control their perspective right? and the, the, the way they're going to see things. So if you can just ha have one agenda just pumping out all the time, which is fear, 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 
uh, that's the way to control people and, uh, you know, herd them along like a bunch of sheep and so the way you want them to go. It's so true. What are your what are your feelings about the vaccine? Because that's what they're basically they want everybody to get the vaccine, regardless of whether they had this or not. Well, first of all, the um, survival rate for the, um, you know, whatever it is, is like even officially is ninety nine point seven or eight percent. So why would you need to take a vaccine for something that's, you know, unless you're like old and you have other comorbidity, like serious diseases, um, just like every flu season, then do what you got to do to protect yourself. Um, I'm not a believer in um, the amount of vaccines that we use now. I think it's dangerous, but these yeah. uh, vaccines that they're proposing for this is, I mean, they're not even tested and uh, the manufacturers are not liable for any damages. So why would you want to have a no liability clause before you bring something out? I mean, if you, you're confident this is something that works and it's safe, why do you need to be not liable for it? Everybody should be liable, like if they cause harm and damage, because they know that's what it's going to do. It's going to harm people. It's, it's, it's killing people. And I don't know the percent of people, but people have certainly died from it. I think there was 30 Absolutely. or 40 people in Norway I read the other day so far, and it's happening all around. So, And uh, I do believe it's, it's, it's going to damage people, but... You know, I believe in a free world, man. If you want to take a vaccine and you, you you know, inform yourself and that's the choice you want to make, then it's cool, man. Do, do what you want to do. That, that's my whole, that's my whole uh, philosophy. Like everybody should be able to do what they want to do. As long as it doesn't infringe or harm somebody else, they should do what they want to do. But I agree. shouldn't be forced on anybody. If you, you know, um, making decisions... You, you're, a, you're a man, you're a sovereign being. You should be able to make decisions regarding your own health and wellness. You know, that, that shouldn't be forced on you or forced on anybody or forced on a child because they want to go to school or, or something like this. And um, that's what they're, they're trying to do. And um, they're talking now about a special passport for, to be able to travel. You're going to have to be vaccinated. And even there's little murmurs and rumors in England now, because that's the way politicians work. Okay, yeah, we're going to probably have it for travel. Yeah, I heard it here we too. Won't, we won't have to have it to go to the pub or to go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Why are you putting that out there? And then later on, they're like, we may have to consider having it to go to the pub and the theater. And then later on, it becomes, yeah, it's, you know, for everyone's safety, we're going to have to do this. So they're trying to coerce mm -hmm. everybody into a situation where they feel they're going to have to take the vaccine in order to function in mm -hmm. society. Um, you know, th this, uh, this situation uh, has been predicted by many people, even, even maybe you can refer to the Bible where it's saying the mark of the beast, you won't be able to travel, you won't be able to trade, you won't be able to do anything without that mark. So it looks pretty much like that's what it is I, I couldn't agree more with you and it's frightening it really is because we're seeing this drastic change and it's global and the problem is that people like you and I that that don't want to be imposed by this by the you know what their agenda is they're restricting us to the point where we're going to have to sue we're going to have to you know we're going to have to say that there's this, this is my body and you know, at worst, if you test negative, you should be able to fly. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I've took a flight to England and uh, and Romania in the past couple of months. Unfortunately, I was negative. But, I mean, the, the PCR test is uh, the guy that I think his name was Kelly or Kerry Mullins. Right. I mean, he, he stated that not, this test is not meant to identify a virus. Um so it's identifying some genetic material that you can find pretty much anywhere. Um, there was this case of the politician from Africa that tested a, a goat and a, 
piece of fruit. I think it was. I heard that. I think the fruit was called a pawpaw or something, and right. this came back uh, positive. And there was an Austrian um, politician. He tested a glass of Coca Cola, and the Coca Cola came back uh, positive. So, I mean, it's a lottery. The, the test is not really proving that you have COVID-19 if such a thing exists, because unless I'm mistaken, it's never been isolated. So how can you identify something with a test that has never been isolated? Uh, maybe somebody can enlighten me, but I don't understand that. And the way they rushed this whole thing, I mean, it was just like a wave of, of control and fear. And I mean, even people like, you know, David Icke, who spoke, they censored him. They censored Brian Rose. They censored so many people and just in the name of this. I don't even want to mention it because I don't want to get censored, but in the name of this whole thing. Yeah. And it's just it's it's frightening. At some point, there has to be there has to be a conscious movement to get out of this mess. I think that's what's going to happen. You know, the, the pressure is going to, and it's already happening. But the more stressful it gets, the more pressure that happens and the more obvious that this is not, any of this situation is not for your health. Since when is the government concerned about your health? If they're really concerned about your health and avoiding catching a virus, why they wouldn't just tell you to take a vitamin D supplement? And make sure you're in the high normal range in a vitamin D and it'll cost you a couple of dollars and uh, you'll be good to go. They're not telling anyone that. No. Um, not. There's no profit in that. There's no profit and there's no control. And uh, that's what the situation is about. And um, I mean, okay, people say that David Icke is a professional conspiracy theorist, but I just think he's a researcher. Mm -hmm. And um, I met him about 20 years ago. And many of the things that he was talking about or predicting have come to fruition. So um, I think he's pretty well informed. I, 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 I listened to him 20 years ago and he was talking about the same situation, but it was going to be a microchip. Okay, it hasn't turned out to be a microchip, but the vaccines do have nanoparticles in there. So um, it's not far off, right? Well, I mean, the, the nanoparticles can receive and transmit a signal. There may be a way, there may be something that they put in there that they can actually just wave a wand and see if you took it or you didn't, which means that all of your, yeah, that means that they would have access to all your health information too. Yeah, and um, I do, you know, this is a plan, this is an agenda, and it's not happening, it's not going to stop next week, it's not going to stop next month, just because you wear a mask or you comply, it's just going to keep rolling out, it's going to keep rolling out, unfortunately, and uh, it's a tough situation to be in, if you, um, right now I can't see my kids, my kids are in the UK, they can't travel to Spain, because Sp English people can't come to Spain, because there's, you know, a lot of cases in England, or... Uh, you know, you test more people, you get more positive cases, of course. Right, especially um, if the test is faulty. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you're like um, everybody that dies that has respiratory symptoms has been listed as a COVID on the, on the death certificate. So old people die all the time. I mean, the most simple thing to do is to look at the um, all-cause mortality. So that's everybody dying of everything. If there was some huge pandemic like the Black Death or the plague or something, that, that's what they're trying to project on us. Surely there would be a lot more people dying last year and this year than previous years, but it's pretty much, it's pretty much even. So no more people are dying than normal. It's interesting how it's record lows for flu. Yeah, flu has pretty much disappeared. That's magical. Has it, has it disappeared? No, because it's always been around. So right. what all they've done is just took the stats from one box and put them in another box. Right, exactly. And, you know, to, to, to control people, to put them in Pretty fear. fear. People, are, yeah. people, people are really afraid, man. I mean, I'd probably be afraid if I wasn't better informed and uh, I just watch TV all day. I mean, it's just 24 or 7 on TV. Like, anytime it comes on, I just turn it off because... You know, I don't, it's I don't brainwashing. Know. Yeah, it's, it's a repeated, repeat, repeat, repeat something enough times people are going to accept it and believe it. That's, you know, the um, human psychology behind this is well studied. 
man. I mean, the whole fa- the whole fact that okay, if th- the mask is supposed to protect others from you if you're sick, that's what it's supposed to do. Okay, so when everybody's wearing a mask, you automatically think that everybody's sick. And if they're not wearing a mask, you think they're sick and they're not wearing a mask. And that is just not acceptable. Well, the the whole mask thing is the same as the vaccine argument. Right. Well, if you had, had if you've had a vaccine and that, you know, you're very confident that protects you from everything. Why are you worrying that I don't have it? Because even if I'm sick, you shouldn't be able to get sick because you had the vaccine, right? Right. It's the same argument with the mask. Like if you want to wear a mask, it makes you feel safe. Why are you worried about me? If your mask is working, Right, it's stopping everything from getting in that you believe. Then why would you be afraid of somebody not wearing it? It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? It doesn't. And really, to be quite honest with you, if you feel if you feel you've been exposed, then just stay at home. You know, just yeah. stay at home for a couple of weeks. My mother was sick. I, we she never got tested, but we figured that this is it was this thing. But she never had a fever. She never had a fever. She never had a cough. She I know people that have been really sick and they had the symptoms of um, losing the smell and the taste, uh, which seems to be common. Right. And yeah, like we're not saying that nobody ever died from it, but people die every year and uh, more people are dying in, in places like UK where they're not getting care because the hospitals are not taking in uh, the cancer patients and the heart disease and, and right. people are not getting treatment. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> probably more people are dying from unrelated causes, not to mention suicides are up at like 50 percent. Overdoses, too. Uh, and uh, alcoholism and all kind of uh, problems. So none of it makes sense, man. I'm sure we're not going to solve it um, today, but uh, that's my take on things. And I pretty much knew this from the start. What are your feelings about uh, low testosterone? <laughs> <laughs> low testosterone. I like that t shirt. Hey, yeah, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I got a few that are pretty cool. <laughs> well, it, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a health problem, low testosterone. Yeah. And more um, people get COVID with low testosterone. You know that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I should imagine if you got low testosterone, then your immunity would be. Weakened, compromised, yeah, for for, for many things, and uh, your body's not functioning optimally, um, and it's still like I got this coaching website now, DY Academy, where I'm coaching people, and one guy is telling me um, he has deficient, he has low testosterone uh, in the UK, but his doctor won't give him testosterone hmm. because he thinks he wants it to build muscle or to bodybuild or something, but the guys that, you know, is, is deficient. You, you know, you wouldn't turn down uh, a female that's, you know, uh, gone through menopause and they're not producing enough estrogen now or whatever, and not going to tell them like, you can't have your replacement. So there's some, still this stigma attached to, to male uh, testosterone replacement. It's, it's even worse, Dorian, because the, the fact is, is that if a woman wants testosterone because she wants to be a man, they'll give it to her. But if yeah, a man wants true. testosterone because he's low testosterone, they won't give it to him sometimes. And that's just shocking. Excellent shocking. point, man. Excellent point. You have, you, have, you have parents that are condoning child, I don't know what you want to call it. It's, it, it must be some sort of uh, child abuse, actually, because the child's not mentally prepared to, to take hormones that would block it from developing young boys that think they're girls and the parents allow them to take estrogen, but prepubescent Dorian prepubescent. And they, they never, ever have that burst later on. They've, they've done the studies. A lot of these people that do this, they commit suicide because they can't go back. And it's, it's, it's just, in my opinion, I think it's, it's 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 another engineering of society like the destruction of the family and oh, yeah. um, the vilification of the, like the strong male character. Right. Uh, it, it's all part of this. Um, I saw something, I think it was Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Jordan Peterson. Um, I like him. Mm-hmm. 
from and Canada. He, you know, he was, I think it was Sam anyway. I could be wrong, but anyway, whoever made the point, I thought it was a great point where he said, you know, if you went to the hospital and you said, look, man, I just, I feel like a one-armed guy, you know? I just really feel like uh, I should just have one arm, right? So I want you to remove this right arm if you can just cut this right arm off. I mean, they're going to just put you in for some psychiatric help, right? That's, yeah, absolutely. But if you say, man, I want to chop my dick off and you know, I feel like a woman, I want to make a vagina, then you know, let, roll out the red carpet for you now. It's, it's crazy. And this, stuff, this stuff is being taught in schools that you... There is no gender, or there's a neutral gender. Or there's a million genders. It's nonsense, man. And then, and now I see that I don't know even what you call it, but guys, like somebody that was born a man, and now he's had a surgery and everything to become a woman, can right. compete in women's sports. I I think they can just identify. I don't think they even have to have the surgery. I think they could self-identify as a woman, and they can compete in women's sports. What a crazy world we're living in, man. Really. I mean, listen, between between you gotta, us. You've got to laugh, laugh of it sometimes, man, because. Oh, yeah, you know, it's common. You know, otherwise, it, it would drive <laughs> you crazy if anyone the rational, like, going through this. I mean, you, but listen, I, I have nothing against anyone's choice to do whatever, just like that we don't, right? Yeah. But they they want to say that, that, that they should be accepted, but they don't want to accept the alpha male or the bodybuilder or whatever. It's not an even playing field. It tipped in the in the direction that is not. It's it's basically social now. It has nothing to do even do with uh, trying to achieve a goal uh, that's a sport or something like that. It's it's just purely social. You want to be a, a different gender, they'll give you the hormones. But if you feel like you don't have enough hormones of, of your own gender, they won't give them to you. It, it's it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, there's always been people that are more masculine or more feminine or whatever, but you're born. A certain sex, that's the way, you know, that's I the think way it's you're a, I, I don't want to, again, I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody's choice of what they choose to be or anything like that, okay? But I, I do think that at some point we have to say that th this is a mental issue and it needs to be addressed as a mental issue. And that there but should it, be a it's, lot it's of... It's being projected and being promoted as being something normal and being encouraged. Um... So, you know, we all have these feelings when we're young, maybe uh, we're not happy with something, but it's a huge change to make, as you say, and once you've done it, you can't go back. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the engineering of society, taking away the, the masculinity, taking away the family uh, structure and um, kind of the unity is trying to divide everybody. Yeah. It is true. And I'm really glad that we got to talk about this because a lot of people don't really understand what's going on. And I hope that they get enlightened. At least they see that, that we're being used. We're being compromised, all of us. Yeah. And, you know, it's affecting not only if you don't feel it's affecting you personally, it's still it's affecting other people that you know, and you need to, we need to all I, be I feel bad for our kids that are growing up in this society now, like I mean, I don't know if it's everywhere, but some places in school they got to wear a mask. Oh yeah, all day, and and you got to be afraid of, of your your friends, and you can't hug, and you can't play together. And uh, what kind of a world is this to grow I got up in? Emails, in a, you know, it's not even real. Kids don't, I, kids <laughs> don't even get the these respiratory diseases. Dwayne, it's worse than you could even imagine. I got an email from my son's school. He's, he's five and a half, okay? And um, the, the email basically said that your child has to be compliant with whatever the vaccines are that the school says you have to have, period, okay? But listen, it went on. It went on, and this is what it said. And I was shocked. That's why our son's not going back to school, unfortunately. But it said that in the event that there's an emergency outbreak in the school, OK, yeah. meaning that they're going to test the, ki the kids without your consent. They can. They can test all the kids without your consent. And if they find one child is positive, listen to this. They can keep the kids in the school, not allow the parents to see the child or take the child out, vaccinate all the kids that weren't vaccinated and then send them home with the bandaid. 
Yeah, they have something similar in UK, Coronavirus Act, uh, same kind of thing where they could actually enter your home if they suspect that somebody has this um, or test positive for it and they can isolate them somewhere and you, you're not able to visit them. Mm. And uh, if they pass away, they can actually cremate the body and uh, dispose of the body with no uh, autopsy or, or anything like this. So uh -huh. that's I mean, crazy. Come on, wake up, people. It's not, there's, um, the, where, is, where is any of your uh, human rights or freedoms are just being um, destroyed with this, with this story? Did you hear about the governor of New York getting caught at a restaurant after he made mask mandatory and none of the people at the restaurant were wearing masks? No, I didn't hear about it, but it surprised me not at all. I mean, you know, there's, uh, they know it's not real. Exactly. They're, they're, that's they're that, that's my whole point. It. That's my whole point. All these public officials in every country, pretty much everywhere in the world is being bought off with this. Well, I, I have a business associate I'm not going to say the country because I don't want to get anyone into trouble, but um, a couple of my business associates, they actually had a lunch with um, a president or a prime minister, you know, top guy in the country. And when they were talking, he was like, yeah, this, you know, bullshit with the masks and all this stuff. And then the next day they saw him on TV saying how it's very important that you just wear the mask and, and all this stuff. So, you know, that these people are, are paid actors. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, but I got, I got like five minutes, man, because I got to do another call. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no worries, man. I, I we're good. I, I appreciate it. I'll let you get ready for your other call, and maybe we'll do a, a yeah. Part I guess two. It's actually in a, uh, in Iran, a guy in oh, Iran. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. It's uh, bodybuilding's international. People are international, and um, it, hopefully, enough people come together and, and challenge us in the right way. You've got to be smart about, you know. I think at a time going. like this where people need to turn to health and fitness in order to, to have their immune system strong enough to not get this, they're going to turn to bodybuilders. They're going to turn to people like you and people like me. And we're ha we have to be ready with the advice to give them on how to keep their immune systems healthy and strong, you know, yeah. exercise, fitness, vitamin D, all the things that you should eat, a well-balanced diet. And really quick, though, you're, you're pretty much vegetarian, aren't you? Actually, I just started eating more animal protein again since I dislocated my shoulder. Okay. Was instinctively, I just thought I need it, and uh, right. I spoke to a few specialists as well, and they they highly recommend it, um, especially stuff with bones in and everything like that. So, um, how's your shoulder now? It's it's a lot better. I'm still having this little pain at the front where the bicep tendon was dislocated, right. and that's why um, the surgeon here wanted to do surgery to kind of like. I think I have a little tear in the subscapular and, and a tear in the supraspinatus. I remember. And they told me the bicep tendon is going to be unstable now. It's going to move around and cause you pain. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing my best to avoid the surgery. And uh, I think maybe it's possible with strengthening everything, doing the proper rehab and everything. So I'm going to try that first. And I'm using some peptides as well, as you know, to um, increase the TB uh, 157 yeah. and TB 500 okay. is uh, yeah. the two that I've been using. <clears throat> and yes, I can actually train now like I'm pulling stuff. I'm not you, back to 100%, but I can pull like I can row and stuff, and it doesn't seem to be causing me any problems. But pushing and doing laterals or something is still painful. Did you put it in, in the muscle? Yeah, I put the BP yeah. in the muscle and the, the TB500 in the subcutaneous. Subcutaneous, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, so I'm using both of those together. They're very effective. Yeah, a company called UK Peptides sent them to me and gave me a lot of good advice. And I have a couple of guys that I um, spoke to on Instagram that are sending me programs and, uh, you know, trying to help me avoid the surgery. Because if I have the surgery, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to step right back and it's going to be another six months uh, before I can train. Not that I train heavy anyway, because I already had a shoulder problem with the left side. So, mm -hmm. um, 
is it, you know, and you never know what the conclusion of a surgery is going to be. No one can guarantee a hundred percent positive outcome. So I'm going to try this route first anyway. Can you so do yoga? About, about nine or 10, about 10 weeks now since, since I had the injury and yeah. normal everyday things is fine. It's just, if I try to lift weights like front raise or lateral, it hurts. Or if I'm pushing, it hurts. Um, you're, you're way better than you were over Christmas. You were oh, yeah, much man. That, was, that was early days. It was really yeah. still a lot of pain then. And I, I couldn't get the full range and everything. I got full range back now. And most of the time, <clears throat> it's fine. It's just on certain movements that will cause pain. And I get a little bit at night sometimes, but it's nothing, uh, you know, it's nothing too bad. Your sleep is better now? Yeah, it's better because not waking me up or nothing. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I see you're out there, man. You were snowmobiling. They sent me who, who took the picture because it was you were it was a, you were behind it. It couldn't be a selfie. Oh, there was a, there was a bunch of us, man, on the snowmobiles out, out in uh, Brasov in Romania, which is like a ski place, twenty below zero. So it was cold as fuck, but it was fun. <laughs> anyway, bro, like I gotta go snow, catch yeah, this guy. Is he gonna freak out? Huh? Yeah, man. Right on. Okay. All right, maybe we'll do a part two if you have some time in a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Now, if people like this, we we'll do another one. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for right, your everything. Mate. I appreciate it, brother. Take care, mate. See you soon. Take care, mate. Right on. Please.